Hola, comadres. Welcome to the second episode of Comadreando. I'm your host, Marcy. Today, we're going to be discussing a topic that's pretty important, um, and that is traveling with a child with special needs. Over the summer, I went on vacation with my son, and uh, we went to a couple of different places. A lot of the moms, after I posted photos and videos uh, of children with special needs, they were asking me, how do I do it? What are the logistics? Um, how do I make him comfortable? Uh, basically all about that. So I feel like it's a very important topic. It's not really discussed and it's important to bring it up now, you know, so get you guys ready for winter break and midwinter recess and all those other things that are coming up. Um, so I don't know if you guys know this about me. I'm very organized. So I'm basically going to break the topic up into three categories and the categories are what you do before, during, and after you arrive. Um, these tips are made to make your life easier and your child's life easier as well. So let's get started. So before you travel, when you have that idea, you're like, hmm, I might want to go away with my child this vacation. Um, I suggest having open communication and really talking to them and, you know, involving them. Um, not necessarily on picking the destination. I mean, even though you can, depending on the age, but um, just letting them know, hey, we might go on vacation such and such date, you know, and just keeping them abreast of everything that's going on. Like from the moment you buy the tickets, um, you know, things that they would like to do. Like if there's uh, activities uh, in particular, that they can choose from, that would be dope um, to have them involved in that. Uh, it builds a sense of independence um, and they're gonna feel like they're part of the planning. So it's not a surprise when you guys arrive to the place. Um, uh, it's, besides telling them in advance, it's good to give them reminders. With my little one, he perseverates on things. So I have to pick and choose my battles on what I tell him we're doing because he will be the one to ask me every day until we get to the place. So where are we going uh, in June, mom? And um, I'll have to respond to him. It's not that he doesn't know. It's just in his mind, he is acclimating and getting used to the idea that he won't be home and that he will be, you know, either taking an airplane or a train or a bus somewhere or a car ride, a really long car ride. Um, so because our children are more sensitive um, to those type of things, you know, you, you know your child. So it's, it's really uh, based on preference. Um, sometimes it helps to have a visual countdown. So if you have a calendar that you can buy or something you can print where you're like crossing off the days, like, okay, one day less, this many more days until we arrive at such and such place. Um, that would be really cool. Uh, I don't know about you, but as an adult, I don't like to have things dropped into my lap last minute, which is why I advise on um, communicating with your child. Second tip. Uh, I would suggest taking foods that are preferred for your child. For example, a lot of our children have food aversions. Um, it's important to bring things that they can eat, especially if it's going to be an airplane ride that's pretty long. Um, what I can tell you is that you can pack any kind of solid food in your bag, like your carry-on, not your carry-on. I would say like the personal item, or if you're packing them a backpack, you can pack whatever food it is inside their bag. You can scan it. TSA will not remove it. Unless it's a liquid, obviously, that's more than four ounces. But definitely pack them whatever they like to eat, be that a sandwich or pizza or um, rice and chicken like Aiden. Um, whatever you, they like to eat, pack it up. Um, back in the day, I don't know, I'm probably dating myself right now, but uh, when I was a kid, uh, I remember traveling and getting a full meal on American Airlines. That is no longer the case. They barely give pretzels and cookies and nuts and things like that. So um, for me and my son, 
uh, food equals no meltdown uh, or no hangry child. Uh, so it's important to bring the food along. With respect to drinks, uh, there's many restaurants, many convenience places inside the airport where you can buy, purchase um, drinks like water, juice. I wouldn't give them soda, but if that's your thing, soda. Um, and I'll take it with you on the airplane. Um, yeah, so, and, and also, okay, if you don't have an opportunity to pack anything, there's restaurants and places to pick up snacks in the airport before you get on the plane. So I would suggest arriving in the airport with more than enough time so that you can, you know, do the check-in process, you can go through TSA. And then once you're on the other side that you're waiting for your plane, you're gonna have a couple of hours to spare. You have a chance to go to the stores or to the restaurants and pick something up to eat. Um, yeah, uh, tip number three. Uh, make sure you bring your preferred, your child's preferred toys along, be that stuffed animals, Legos, puzzles, um, anything that, you know, that they can like. If you know that they like a certain type of toy, it's also good to bring something new that you know that they would like to keep them entertained for a few hours on the plane or even books. Um, a lot of the kids that I know love to read books. So, you know, taking a book or a coloring book on the airplane will save you a lot of uh, headaches later on. Uh, so I call Aiden's backpack the magic backpack. So in there I put all the things that he enjoys. Um, if it's a tablet, that's okay too. You know, put you know, the charger of the tablet inside the backpack and um, and the tablet as well. The only thing when you're passing through security, if it's a laptop or a tablet, you have to take it out and put it in the tray um, with your things. Um, I don't know what's the purpose of that, but they just wanna know that it's actually uh, a tablet or a laptop, I guess, I don't know. Um, tip number four, take chargers and electronics um, in your go bag. Uh, you don't know how important it is. Uh, there's been times that I've gone not far away, but like on a road trip and I forget um, the charger and I have to end up buying a charger either wherever there's a convenience store, which always ends up being more expensive than actually getting the official charger from Apple or wherever. Um, so yeah, definitely take your um, chargers and electronics. Um, make sure you charge the, the electronic before you leave to the airport or the bus station or the train station, um, because there's not always a guarantee that you're gonna have working outlets. For example, this summer when we were going to Dominican Republic, we got stuck in the airport. There was a delay of about three hours and um, Aiden's battery ran out and we had to charge his iPad. None of the outlets in that terminal, well, in the gate where we were at, we're working and because of COVID, I didn't feel safe, you know, going to another gate and charging there. So the, that external battery actually came in pretty clutch. Um, it saved us. Not only that, but then if you're going to a foreign country, you, it's, there's no guarantee that, you know, there's going to be certain places that may be more rural than what you're used to here in the States. So having that external battery will definitely save your life. Um, Number five, take headphones or earplugs for your child. Um, if they have an auditory, if they get overstimulated auditorily, um, those headphones are going to be a lifesaver. There's a lot of noises that we don't perceive as typically developing adults that our children perceive. For example, um, fluorescent lights make a humming sound that we can't hear. I mean, you can hear if you're really close to it, but it might be intensified for our children that are overstimulated um, auditorily. Uh, what else? Um, the airplane engine makes a noise. Could be scary for some kids or it could just bother them. Um, just all kinds of noises. Um, you know, getting some noise canceling headphones. Uh, these are beats, but you know, you don't have to spend uh, a lot of money. They have an, uh, quite a selection in 
I think even five below has some. Um, or if your child doesn't like that, you can get um, earplugs. Earplugs will help a lot. Just for you, as a side note, remember that when you're talking to your child, it's very, very hard to hear when you're wearing the noise canceling headphones because it literally just creates a cocoon. You know, they that where they won't be able to hear the external noise, but they won't be able to hear you either. So definitely, you know, using physical cues um, to get the attention of your child is important. Um, I don't know. Um, my son doesn't particularly like the headphones. He uh, will prefer to do a hand helmet. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but you know, when they kind of cover their ears and go like this, or Aiden likes to do the one ear on the shoulder and cover his other ear with his hand. So he has a free hand to manipulate the, the iPad or the tablet. Um, but definitely, you know, being, paying close attention to things that could trigger your child um, will help a lot too. Like thinking about, you know, going through like the trajectory from your house to the airport will help a whole lot. Um, just so you know, like, you know, you know your child better than anybody else. So just knowing their triggers and kind of um, planning for that will help a lot um, on the trip. Okay. And an expert tip. You ready? In the airport, particularly, they, when they start boarding the airplane that you're finally done waiting and um, you guys are getting ready to get on the airplane, there's a moment when after they call first class, they ask for people with special needs or disabilities, I believe they say, people with disabilities to get on the line, to get on the airplane, to get, um, you know, scan their boarding pass and, and board the airplane. I have started to get up when they say that and get on the line. Why do I do that? Our children have special needs. And not only that, but it reduces the wait time on the line. I don't know if your kids are like my kid. My kid, he can wait, but he gets very antsy after a while, you know, online. You know, it's good to practice being online too, because that's a life skill. You're not always going to be able to skip the line. But this is something you can definitely take advantage of. Um, it just helps you all the way around. Basically, you know, it reduces the wait time. It gives you time to get acclimated for them to get used to their surroundings because it's not like you're sitting in your living room. You know, they can explore a little bit, see where what's going on. You can get them settled and take out their toys or whatever it is that they're going to use on the plane or, you know, have the backpack close by where the things are in reaching distance that you, an arm's distance that you can just go ahead and reach down and grab it out. Um, FYI, if you are stopped or side-eyed by an airline employee, what you're going to tell them is your child's diagnosis and look them straight in the face. Not that you're going to have an attitude, just let them know. And there should not be a problem at all. Um, that actually happened to us when we were in Puerto Rico, uh, when we were coming back to the States, uh, we got up. And um, the airline employee um, stopped us and he was like, oh, I called the people that have special needs. And I was like, yes, I know my son has autism. Um, I didn't say it, you know, in a bad way because I, I have a very strong character. Um, but um, definitely he was very apologetic afterwards. And then um, he met us at the gate after he checked us in or whatever. And he was just telling us, like he was apologizing to me and basically saying that his son has autism as well. And um, that uh, it's good to see that I'm advocating for my son and all of that. So it just made like a kind of like a, a moment where you can connect with the person. So um, it was pretty nice. Um, what else can help? Uh, planning a visual schedule. Some of our kids are visual. I'm a visual person. I'd like to know where I'm going. So, you know, day by day, if you can, 
or if you can write it out somehow and show them, okay, this time we're going to, but don't give them like, I wouldn't give them like specific times because you never know things might happen, but just kind of like an overall rundown of what's going to happen. Um, we're going to eat breakfast then we're going to go and do this and we're going to go and do that. Um, we're going to eat lunch at such and such place, you know, things like that just to help them to calm the anxiety. Cause a lot of the time they get anxiety based on things that they can't control or things they don't know about. So it'll help get them more comfortable if they know exactly what's going on. I would suggest also watching videos about the place or seeing pictures. Um, Google Earth is an amazing resource. So if you're going to a specific place and you have the address, you can literally type it into Google Earth and it'll zoom in and you can see where you'll be and you can show them, you know, um, that'll be helpful. If you can watch videos from the place where you're visiting, that'd be cool too. Um, some kids love maps. I had students that absolutely love train maps and uh, they would feel comfortable when they're traveling because, you know, you'd show them a map and you're like, okay, so we're going to take a trip today and we're going to start off here in this train station and we're going to switch at this train to such and such place. And then we're going to end our trip at this place. It's going to take about this amount of time. So that way they can, you know, just kind of get their mind around um, what's going to happen. Um, like I said, waiting in line. Uh, some parents like having a safety bracelet on, on, on their child. So, you know, something with the name, maybe the diagnosis and a phone number so they can call just in case, God forbid. Um, what else? Uh, reinforcers for good behavior. So, you know, traveling is, is a lot for adults as well as children. So, you know, having something that's really reinforcing, that's going to encourage good behavior um, would be really cool. Also a sensory toy. So if your child does get overstimulated, you can give them a sensory toy so that they can, um, help calm themselves down. All right. Next section. We're going to talk about what you do when you're on the plane. Remember to be sure to, sorry guys, I have notes just so I won't miss any of the, any of the, um, tips. So give them movement breaks. Don't, even if the, 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 I mean, if the five cent seat belt light is on, as soon as it's off, make sure you get up with your kid, walk around the plane. Even if they want to go up and down the aisles a couple of times, it's good to get them moving. Um, let them use the bathroom too. I mean, it's an experience. Um, sometimes the airplane bathrooms or the bus bathrooms are not the cleanest, but, um, you know, it's, you know, don't take away from their experiences. It's good to give them real world things. Like things are not always going to be exactly how we want them to be. Um, I like to sit my kid in the middle or the window seat. Um, just because when he was little, he used to like run um, all over the place. So uh, it gave me more of a, it gave me more of a control with what was going on. Uh, so I definitely encourage you, if you can, sit them in the window or the middle seat. Um, that's pretty much it. And then, you know, obviously feed them on the plane and give them things to drink. Um, oh, another thing on the airplane, expert tip number two, get them, if they tolerate something around their neck, one of those airplane pillows. It's so helpful because more often than not, Aiden will knock out while we're traveling. So, you know, having that uh, airline pillow, they can sleep, you know, very comfortably and they're just kind of like tilting their head to the side. So um, it's like their neck is not going to hurt when they wake up or anything like that. Uh, get us on the airplane. Another thing, if your child likes to take off their shoes, let them. It's okay if they're sitting on their seat. Not a big deal. Just like, you know, I know some kids have issues putting the things back on after they take them off, but reminding them that, you know, it's just until we land. When we land, you have to put on your shoes or your socks or whatever else they want to take off. Um, oh, and then dressing them also in comfortable clothes. Like, 
I know sometimes, um, at least my mom, when I was a kid, would want to dress me up in this, like, fancy dress and shoes. And I'd just be overall very uncomfortable on the plane. Um, but I would definitely suggest, if you can, like, dress them in sweatpants or sweatshorts and, you know, as comfortable as possible because those airplane rides or bus rides or train rides you tend to be very long and very uncomfortable the goal is to make them as comfortable as possible um okay and now we're going to move on to the next section after you arrive all right uh a lot of the tips go uh for this so basically you know show them pictures about where they'll be going, um, if you're gonna do any ex excursions. If you can have them help you pick, that'd be nice too. Um, any excursions, show them photos, more or less will you, where you will be. Um, what else, let me think. Again, watch videos, show them a map, especially if you're going to like a theme park like Disney World or something like that, or Hershey Park. Um, Choose a meeting location. Um, remind them that they're going to be waiting in line as well. The meeting location is important because, God forbid, something happens, they know where to meet you. Or teaching them, you know, my name is, if they're verbal or if they're nonverbal, you know, having them use whatever mode of communication they have to say, my name is such and such, my mom's name is XYZ or my dad's name is XYZ. Um, will be helpful but um you know for the most part i feel like you know the kids are pretty good about staying with their parents um again communication is key talk to your child about the places you will visit in advance um if you're taking any road trips during the vacation let them know the expectation of how long it will take to get there um and the places we will stop at make sure that you you know, schedule in those pit stops for them to take breaks. Uh, uh, so for the big theme parks, I wanted to talk about, um, at least with Disney, they have a pass for people with cognitive disabilities. So they have like a, an office that handles all of that. So they give you a pass and um, you can do things like, a fast pass basically it helps you skip the line um they basically there's another service that they let you tag team out with a person from your party so let's say you go on a ride and you have the your child with you you can switch out with another person from your party and they don't have to make the line which is really nice um they also have um pit stops for sensory breaks um those pit stops are really helpful, especially when kids get overwhelmed. You know, you have a little quiet space. Not, I don't know how big they are because we haven't been to Disney yet, but it's in the plans. Um, so from what I heard from other parents, they have a, a room that you can take your child, which is not far from the attractions, where it's quiet and they can take a break and kind of just relax, you know. Um, those parks can be a lot, there's a lot of people, a lot of things going on, different smells, different noises. So um, besides it being really pretty and like very entertaining, um, it can be overwhelming. So it's nice to know that there's um, rooms where you can, you know, take your child. And if you are going to Disney, I can give you the website to access that. And it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash disneyworld.disney.go.com slash guest dash services slash cognitive disabilities services. So um, you can get all that information there. Um, yeah, I feel like that's a lot of the, of the tips. Um, of course, you know, when you pack for your child um, the suitcase, take clothes that they're going to feel comfortable in and that make sure the shoes are, you know, the right size and the right fit. And um, 
if you need to take anything like a like a weighted blanket factor that into your um suitcase um Ah, bugs. If you're going to tropical islands, remember, there are mosquitoes. And it is in your best interest to take repellent. Um, even if they, like, if you, even if you, sometimes even if you put the, the mosquito repellent, um, they can get bit. Um, I know Aiden is the type of kid that once he's bit, he'll keep scratching until he, like, um, gives himself a scab which is not great but um i was able to buy uh this anti-itch cream that is for allergies and um, the anti-itch cream is uh really helpful because it helps him stop scratching and just really um soothes the skin um also taking what is that cream hydrocortisone is also helpful as well. Um, also, any kind of, if your kid sometimes gets sick from their tummy, you know, taking um, whatever you give them at home, you can take with you. Um, just make sure um, when you pack it, put it in a Ziploc bag uh, so that it doesn't spill everywhere. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. Ah, uh, finding out if where you're going has AC. Uh, my guy is a winter baby. Well, late fall. Um, and he's not used to the heat. And there were some places that I visited when he was younger. Um, we went to back home to Dominican Republic to visit my family. And we went to the countryside, Palcampo. And let me tell you something, there is no AC out there. There's uh, barely a fan. And he was not used to that. So he was perfectly fine during the day. As night fell, it got warmer. And, you know, we tried to make him comfortable. We put the mosquito net. And when he sees this mosquito net and the heat, and that, you know, the he was not subsiding, he proceeded to have a very big meltdown. Um, basically, we had to take him out of the bed, take him outside for a walk, because it was actually cooler outside than it was inside, surprisingly. Um, so we're walking with him. We're trying to help him calm down. He's, like, crying, telling us he wants to go home. Mind you, it's, like, super late already. It's, like, 9 o'clock. And um, we're from La Vega. So going from La Vega to the capital at that time, we wouldn't get home probably till like almost 11 o'clock at night. So that was not an option. Um, so we're walking him around. One point we, it occurs to us to shower him. So we get a bucket and give him a shower outside. That didn't help. Still crying. We're like dressing him and putting the repellent again. And uh, finally it occurs to us to put him in the car and turn on the AC. After about 30 minutes, um, mind you, we'd been already dealing with it for like an hour. After about 30, 20, 15 to 30 minutes, he was out like a light and he was able to fall asleep there. So um, yeah, once he fell asleep, we were able to get him in the room, but definitely um, study and research where you're going to if there's gonna be if there's constant electricity, one, if there's ACs or fans, two, um, you know, just for the um, the comfort of your child. Uh, yeah, it, it, if had I done the research, because I, I had never really been out of, the, I mean, when he was a baby, we had gone. But that was like the first time where he was like, you know, verbal and was able to speak that we went and it was just really bananas that day um what else okay another tip research the if you're gonna do any tourist attractions like monuments or anything like that kind of look at the policy and if you can call ahead and let them know 
you know, you're going with a child that has special needs, you know, if there's anything like a tour guide or anything like that, that they can help you out with, um, that would be helpful. Another thing that happened to us was that we decided to go visit the First Church of America, um, La Basilica in Niue, which is the, it's in Niue, Dominican Republic, which is southeast, um, kind of close to Punta Cana, but not really, like a couple of hours away. So um, we decided to go there as a family. Um, I'm inside the church with my son. I'm letting my mom do the pilgrimage because you have to go in and make a line and you go up these stairs and you look at this beautiful painting of La Virgen de Alta Gracia. And then you go down the stairs and you exit the church. Um, so I was waiting in the back for mom. Aiden was on his phone, on his iPod actually. And um, he scripts. Uh, and when he's excited, he gets very loud. Um, so at one point, the, I don't know if he was not security, somebody that worked in the church came over to us and basically, you know, told me that I needed to leave with my child. I was heartbroken and embarrassed at the same time. Um, I wasn't where I'm at right now with respect to advocacy for my child. So I kind of just, you know, gathered him up, let him know that we needed to go. And um, we started leaving the church. At the steps of the church, he has this meltdown telling me that he wants to be inside. And I'm trying to explain to him that he's very loud and that they're not letting us be there. So he's like crying and like pulling away to like run inside the church. I'm trying to hold him and help him feel, um, calm uh i'm by myself because everybody's doing the pilgrimage it was a humongous line and um i'm dealing with it um at that point people passerbys are coming and they're looking at me and you know true dominican fashion and i'm not talking smack about our culture but a lot of people don't think before they speak so they were basically telling me like or like basically saying, um, give your child to me, I'll take care of them, I'll whip them and I'll put them into shape and they'll behave perfectly fine afterwards. Basically saying like, I'm a crappy mom because my child is having a meltdown and that they know better that the rod is better than the word. Um, so that's, that was making me upset. And at one point, I just I just lost it. I, like once my family came back, I'm like bawling hysterical. Aiden's crying. I'm crying. My mom's like getting teary-eyed. And then finally, finally, um, my roommate, um, she's amazing, by the way. She's my bestie. Uh, she knows who she is. My roommate at the time, um, it occurs to her to tell Aiden that it is like a library and that he needs to be quiet to be able to go into the library. So that clicked for him because it's something he's familiar with and he's um, associating certain behaviors for the church that relate to the library. So after she told him that, he got himself all the way together, wiped his tears from his eyes, went in super quiet. He actually did the pilgrimage. Like he went up to see the painting, looked at it, walked back down, and that was it. So um, had I done a little research, um, I would have known, you know, and I would have prepared him a little bit better. But, you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda. It was a learning experience at the time. So, um, you know, this is something that happens and, um, I don't know about you guys, but there was a lot of meltdowns at the beginning. Now, not so much. Thank goodness. He's already 12. He's turning 13 uh, in November, but, um, 
another thing that I wanted to talk about. Ah, if your child has a comfort toy, so that could be a plushie, it could be a blanket, like a security blanket, um, let them take it with them. Um, you know, it's important. It'll help them feel comfort. And um, it'll help them, like, if they get upset, it'll help them calm down. Um, Aiden had a a little blankie. So side story, a little back story for this. Um, my first purchase as an adult in my when I was 19 was a, a quilt set for my bed. And um, so that was, like, when he was born that was like eight years old already. Um, so, you know, after washing it, it gets nice and soft. So Aiden loved this quilt um, so much. So he wanted to take the humongous full size quilt and like drag it everywhere. So what I did was cut it up, like had somebody cut it and um, sew it and make individual blankies just in case any of them got lost. So he took his blanket to Dominican Republic. You know, it helped him out a lot to soothe and um, so self-soothe and, um, you know, just feel comfortable. But at one point, we went to a resort. We went to Hard Rock in Punta Cana, which is humongous. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's like a country inside of a country. Huge. You can't go anywhere without a trolley. So we're on the trolley and we're headed to breakfast. And um, the trolley makes a stop to let somebody off. When Aiden sees the pool... He speeds off in the distance, running towards the pool. We're running after him. There's people there. We're like, help, stop him. He's running away. And nobody helps you, of course, because they think you're crazy. And um, he gets to the edge of the pool, and my heart is in my throat. I'm thinking he's going to jump in. So, you know, I finally almost reach him, and instead of jumping in, he throws his blankie in the pool because he thinks that he wanted to go for a swim. Um, yeah, I almost died. Um, it was just a really, just like very dramatic, crazy experience. Um, so kind of like I would, from that experience, I know to kind of, you know, just kind of think like my kid. Um, sometimes it's hard, I know, but, um, definitely think about things that they would kind of uh, that would occur to them um so that was that was one thing we were able to fish it out and everything was fine afterwards um another story while we were on vacation uh we were at a villa in samana i think this was the same no this was the year after um we were at a villa in samana which is a uh, the northeast part of the country um Aiden was already taking swimming lessons. So he must have been, it was at the end of kindergarten, almost first grade. So he had taken swimming lessons and he think he, knew, he thought he knew how to swim. So whatever, you know, I was in the pool with him. We were having fun. At one point he gets out of the pool and starts running to the deep end of the pool. And all of us are freaking out. It was like my whole family was there. So we're like running after him, running after him. He gets to the edge before we're able to reach him. And I'm not a very good swimmer. So we think he's just going to cannonball into the pool. But he was able to lower himself down slowly and, like, you know, hold on to the edge of the pool till he got to the end. Um, so that's another thing. If you can get your child swimming lessons, especially if they're on the spectrum, um, I would make that investment because it's been a lifesaver. Like, I don't leave him by himself in the pool, but um, knowing that he knows how to swim is a big um, relief for me. Oh, wait, that's another thing you should take. If your child does not know how to swim, even if they know how to swim, take some kind of flotation device, either the little floaties for the arms or one of those life lifesavers. Well, you know, you know, the, the, the donut that they can get in and, you know, you feel comfortable if they're floating around using the little donut or the floaties to swim around. Um, if you're going to do excursions where you're going to be in the ocean, definitely invest in getting a life vest that is 
that your child's size. Um, I didn't know that they came in, that they were like sized up. I know there was like children and adults, but definitely taking into account your child's size and that it fits a certain way and closes all the way is important to, um, you know, keep them safe. So that for real is the last of the tips. But I had a couple of questions from some listeners. So the first question was, how do you try to settle them in the new environment? So like I said, um, getting things, bringing things along that are, that feel like home for them. So bringing a blankie, a plushie, toys, electronics. Um, if you can, and you're going to spend a long time there, send a box with their favorite foods or find an international supermarket there where you can get the products that they like or something very similar and, you know, do a little food shopping and, and take things that they enjoy. Um, if there's a specific pillow that they like, bring it along. Uh, what else can you do? A lot of the, I feel like a lot of the tips are applied to this. Um, and another question they had was, do you have trouble having them eat? Uh, sometimes there's restaurants that we attend that he might not want to eat the food, but trying to find that one thing on the menu that you know for sure they're going to like. Or if you can tell them, I mean, don't lie, but if there's something on the menu that they have not tried, but you know that they would like it, let them know that that food is similar to whatever it is that they love and have them try it. Um, with respect, with respect to eating, um, kids need to try things at least three times before they decide whether they like it or they don't like it. So, you know, don't force them to eat because that can create trauma regarding food, but definitely, you know, have them smell it first, then have them taste it with their tongue. And if they can, you know, give them a little bite and then give them a reinforcer, like whatever it is that they like. If it's five minutes on the iPad, if it's music time or a dance break, anything that you know that's going to really encourage them to try it, do that. Um, and that is it for today. If you have any questions, please feel free to DM me. Send me uh, a DM on Instagram or email me at comadreando at esctheNetwork.com. Follow me on IG if you aren't doing so already. The IG page for the podcast is Comadreando Pod. Um, as always, thank you for spending time with your comadre. And um, I'll see you next time. The following episodes are going to be coming up. We're going to discuss IEPs. We're going to talk about early intervention. We're going to talk about resources, activities that you can do with your child. We're going to talk about dating. So uh, please stay tuned. And if this podcast is of use to you, or if you know somebody that would enjoy or benefit from the information that I'm providing, please forward them the link and um, give them the recommendation. All right. Uh, I appreciate you all so much. Have a lovely rest of the week and take care. Bye.